So as the announcer said, I grew up in a small town in South Africa, close to the Gaborone border, or actually Botswana border next to Gaborone, about 60 kilometers away from there, in a small, small town that had one shop, one bank, one library, and one doctor's surgery. The bank was open on a Wednesday, the library on a Monday. The shop every day, thank God for that. We got our sweeties from there. The drawback with growing up in a rural area in South Africa is if you're a nerd, having a library only open on a Monday, where do you get your books? What do you read? So as you might have guessed, yes, I'm a computer nerd. And I believe that data can show us what re to really do. So I married my computer a while back. <laughs> when I was about 12 years old, for the first time we had a computer in the neighborhood. It was a lady that did the books for all the farmers. And from her, I got extra lessons on how to program in basic. Loved it and fell in love with data. So today, I'm going to take you through a journey, and I'm going to ask you the question, is this backed up by data, or is this opinion? So when you look at problem solving, what predicts our ability to solve problems? Is it the person that is the cleverest? So if we look at a team, the guy with the cleverest person in the team, or the team that consists of only clever people, are they the ones that produce the best output, solve the best problems? What do you think? Just give me a show of hands. What do you think? All right. Whole team clever? No. Diversity. So growing up in South Africa, in apartheid South Africa, I was taught that just because of the color of my skin, I was superior. Okay, so after a while, going to school, this was sort of confirmed because I was the cleverest boy in the school. Yes, there was only 87 kids, but I mean, my data said that I'm the cleverest. Then I went to university, met a lot of other white kids that were clever, and I went like, okay, this seems to reinforce that belief. And then I went to Bloemfontein, and for the first year, black students were allowed on campus. And the person I got along with the best was Orvin Chakela, because we came from the same neighborhood. We both grew up with Tswana as the first language, and he became my best friend. And Orvin was damn clever. So that's when I realized that diversity can be really interesting. We had different perspectives, different views, and all of a sudden he started challenging, challenging me, all my preconceived ideas about the superiority I grew up with. And I started learning that everybody has a voice and everybody has the ability to contribute. I got confronted with Ubuntu. Mm -hmm. It's not who I am, it's who we are. So do you think diversity makes teams solve problems better? Okay. But what kind of diversity? Age diversity? So I grew up with my grandfather, professor in agricultural economics, one of the most well-renowned professors in South Africa, wrote for politicians, amazing man. I learned so much from him, so I thought, you know what? What if you combine this, that young enthusiasm and that older wisdom and knowledge, does that turn us into a better team? And for many years, my grandfather and I, and eventually also my grandmother, formed a really great team when it came to thinking up ideas on the farm, how to make things better. Another woman that played a big role in my life was my mum. She is the first white woman in the neighborhood to actually start an education program for everyone. The first time I got confronted with education was when I was six years old and started developing a lesson plan at six years of age with my mum 
for the kids on the farm. Loved every second of it. Because now my first friends could be helped. Because my second friends were the ones that were discriminatory. My second friends were the ones that says diversity is not important. My second friends were the ones that claimed that they were intellectually superior, where sometimes they did the stupidest things. So as my life progressed, I eventually moved to the Netherlands. And something I learned here is the Polder model. <laughs> it looks a little bit like Ubuntu, but not quite the same. It's, it's not quite as emotive. But it is this principle of we're in this together. We're doing it together. So who says cohesion is important for teams to effectively solve problems? So let's just look at those items again. We already talked about intelligence. We talked about diversity. Who says age? Having young people and old people in a team helps. Okay. Who says having um, women in a team or, let's say, sexual or gender diversity helps? Okay. What does the data say? What is the most important thing you can add to a team that will make that team solve problems better? Women. When in doubt, add another woman. If you're still in doubt, add another woman. When you're worried you're not making the right decision, add another woman. And this backed up by research. It was done at MIT. So why does this work? So one of the first things is when we add more women, women have a special characteristic that they have more often than men. Sometimes gay men have the same thing. All right? And that is that you listen to other people's ideas because you can see that they're sitting with them. It's a principle called cognitive empathy. So that means it's the flip side of a coin. The first side is, can I see that you're sitting with something? Can I see that there is an emotion or something at play? The second part of it is, do I care? And usually with women, both are present. The next thing we want to know about good ideas or good problem solving is, is it evolutionary in nature or is it revolutionary in nature? And revolutionary wins out because if I have knowledge and I use only the knowledge that I've had in the past to solve the problem, I never really come up with an innovative idea. The moment I start looking for other ideas, other than the stuff that I grew up with, other than the stuff that I know, that's where knowledge increases and great ideas are born. So how do I know this? Well, I follow the data, right? So research has shown that these are the characteristics that any innovative team should have. You want to innovate? These are the characteristics. The research is on the website of the VI Character Institute. You can also find the survey there to figure out what your teams have. The next most important thing, or the last one, is experience. So the more experience we have in problem solving, the more experience we have in innovation, the better we can guide the process and the better we can help people. So following that process and knowing how it works, having tools and methodologies, that you've experienced before can help you solve your problems better and innovate more. So what is important? Remember to add women. Remember to be revolutionary. And remember to not discount experience. And remember, always and always follow the data. Thank you.